So we are working on finding zeros of polynomials. In the last video, we talked about, well, what happens if it doesn't intercept it at a specific point exactly? And so that's where the rational zero theorem helps us. It tells us the factors of our constant term divided by the factors of our original term are only possible rational zeros. Then we partnered that up with the calculator, and we saw that the only actual rational zero for our example was x equals 2 fifths. So let's go back to our problem here, and now we know what to actually divide it by. We know that we can divide it by 2 fifths. So that's going to be our first zero, and then we're going to work this down completely to figure out what our other zeros are so we can eventually factor this into linear factors. Okay, so let's run through this synthetic division here. We first know I bring down my term, and then I multiply 5 times 2 fifths. Well, my 5's cancel out, and so that leaves me with 2. So now I add, negative 12 plus 2 gives me negative 10, and now I multiply, negative 10 times 2 fifths. Well, negative 10 divided by 5 gives me 2, so if I multiply that with this here, that's going to give me a negative 4. Add those together, gives me negative 30. Negative 30 divided by 5 gives me negative 6, times 2 gives me a negative 12. And then add, 12 minus 12 gives me 0. Now we know that we should end up with a remainder of 0 here because our calculator told us so. When we plugged this into the calculator, we had that 0. So what we have done is we factored this by one teeny tiny step, and we're still going to have to do a little bit more work to find our other zeros and to finish factoring this completely. So I know that I have x minus my zero of two-fifths, and then that's multiplied by whatever I have left here. So that gives me a 5x squared, because they always start one degree less, minus 10x minus 30. So now I need to factor this piece back here, and that's going to give me my remaining zeros. Well, if you notice, it has a common factor of 5. So let me take out the 5 from that piece. So this is times 5 times x squared minus 2x minus 6. So that's what happens when I factor out 5. Now I need to continue to factor this piece here. Now we have a problem, and that doesn't factor by using our typical trinomial methods. So we need to solve this equation when I set it equal to zero by using my other methods. And so since this is a degree two equation, I can solve it by using the quadratic formula. So I'm gonna solve that over here. I have x is equal to negative b, or negative times my negative two, plus or minus square root, of b squared, so negative 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 6, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So it gives me x equals 2 plus or minus square root of 4 plus 24 all over 2. Simplifying my square root, that gives me square root of 28. And then breaking down my square root using good pi, bad pi method. So 28 simplifies as 4 and 7. So it gives me x is equal to 2 plus or minus 2 root 7. And since this is all over 2, I can cancel all those 2s. And so that gives me my most simplified solution. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1 plus or minus. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1, and then my square root of 7. So this here are my other zeros. So I have zeros of 1 plus root 7. I have another zero of 1 minus root 7. And then, of course, the rational zero that we found of 2 fifths. So now I have answered part A of my problem, where it asked me to find the zero. And now I need to do part B of this problem, which asks me to factor it completely. Okay, so let me go back to this up here. Well, I have it factored just a little bit, but let me talk about how I can factor it completely. 
Well, I know that if I have a zero, such as this two-fifths, x minus the zero is my factor. So that's what I need to do with these other zeros down here. So I have x minus two-fifths. I still have this five. And then I have x minus these other two zeros, a minus one plus square root seven, and x minus one minus square root seven. So now I have my three factors to go with my three zeros to go with my degree three problem. The only thing that I want to do is to try and simplify this a little bit. We know typically when we see factors, we don't see fractions in them. So let me talk about what I can do with this five to get rid of this fraction. I can distribute this five through this first factor, and that will actually get rid of my fraction there. So if I take five times x, that gives me five x. And if I take 5 times a negative 2 fifths, my 5s cancel out, and that leaves me with negative 2. Now that looks like a factor that we're typically used to seeing. So that's the factor that I'm going to leave, and then my other two factors here, I'm just going to copy down from my previous step. So f of x factors into this right here. So I have answered both parts of this problem. First. When it asked me for my zeros, I found my rational zeros of 2 fifths, and then I found 1 plus square root 7, and I found 1 minus square root 7. And then it asked me to factor, and so that's what I did down here. I factored it into linear factors like this. And when it says linear factors, it means all of your factors must be linear or degree 1. So all of these have degree 1 here. Now, we typically don't write the one, so I'm going to leave that off. Now, let me show you how you can confirm this with your graphing calculator. We already have this graph. We already checked with our graphing calculator to confirm that 2 fifths is an answer. Let's use our graphing calculator to confirm that these two right here are also answers. So let me pull that back up. Okay. Again, I'm going to push my trace button. And I'm going to type in the solutions that we believe that we have found to be the correct solution. So again, we already did 2 fifths. When we did that, it came up with y equals 0. So that confirmed that's the solution. Now let me do my other ones. And notice I can type them in exactly how I saw them. 1 plus a square root of 7. And when I hit enter, it's going to give me the decimal approximation of it. It's going to plot me where I am on my graph, and hopefully it confirms that we have a y value of 0. And it did all three of those things. So this tells me that's approximately equal to 3.6. That tells me this is a y-intercept because it gives me a y value of 0. And it tells me specifically which y-intercept it is because it plots it on my graph. Okay, let's type in my other 0 of 1 minus square root 7. Again, that tells me I'm approximately at negative 1.6. It confirms that we have an x-intercept, and it confirms that I have a 0 at that place there. So that confirms that I have my right answer of all of my zeros, and so that should also help us with the factoring of this problem. Okay, I finished this example. And I'm going to come back with another example of working these from the very first step to the very last step of finding all zeros and factoring it into linear factors.